So let's do an x squared minus a 3x squared y plus a 2xy squared equals a 12. Okay, so the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to tell them you're taking the derivative. So you're going to do ddx. Whoa, 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 just sorry. Are you changing my problem? Yeah, don't think out loud. You may change the problem in your own head. Let's just not do it out loud because we don't want to do a what if and the problem looks like this because I don't really want to do the problem I picked, okay? All right, stay with me here. Just stay, stay with me. Try not to think too. Yeah, stay with me. I changed that to a cube. I'm so sorry. Okay, so x to the third minus three x squared y plus two x y squared. And I left myself some room in there because I'm going to write a little bit more. And then d dx of 12. Okay, now, this is just a plain single term x to the third. But this right here, what do I got going on? I got two things being multiplied together. So when you divide this up into a product rule, take the coefficient and the first letter, all right, being multiplied by the y, all right, because I have got to do product rule right here when I do this, okay? So that's the easiest way to divide it up. Technically, I ought to be able to divide it up any way I want, but you want that coefficient with a variable, all right? I got three things being multiplied together here. Put the two with that X as your first term, make the Y squared your second term so we can do product rule here. It's just gonna make life so much easier, okay? All right, and do both of those require chain? Mm -hmm because they have y's, right? If it has a y in there, when I take the derivative, I've got to put a chain in, no chain here. Okay, so first term, that one, just nice little 3x squared. All right, now the other thing that I want to emphasize before we start, this is product rule followed by plus sign. When it's product, product rule followed by plus sign, no big deal. This is product rule followed after a minus sign. What does minus signs do with polynomials? They go through and change all the signs, don't they? So this, whatever your product rule is, really needs to be kept in a set of parentheses because I've got to go through and change all those signs. And if you don't catch that, you're going to drop negatives left and right. This one is not a big deal because it has a plus sign right there in front. This one is a big deal because it's got the minus sign right there. Okay, so I'm literally going to put those in. So I'm going to put my minus. All right, then I'm going to add that square bracket. Okay, now I'm going to start my product rule. All right, so the, der uh, the first term, 3x squared times the derivative of the second. Okay, so derivative of y is 1 and then slap in your, uh, your chain y prime plus the second term y times the derivative of the first term, which is 6x. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I've just done that. Close my parentheses because I'm done. Now we're going to do it again here. The first term, 2x times the derivative of the second, and it's a y, right? So derivative there's gonna be two y, and then remember to slap in the chain, plus the second term, y squared, times the derivative of the first term, which is just a two. And then equals derivative of 12, which is just zero. Now I'm going to clean this up and I'm going to change the signs. I do have a tendency to put dots in between everything as when I'm going through there, when I go through and I clean it up, then I start putting things together, coefficients in front, letters in alphabetical order, that sort of thing. I'm going to distribute when I do that. So 3x squared minus, I'm going to clean this up to a 3x squared y prime. 
prime. I'm going to distribute that negative. I'm going to pull the six out in front and put it in alphabetical order. So six X, Y. This term right here, I've got two, 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 right? Two times two. So I'm going to pull a four out in front. I'm going to put them in alphabetical order. X, Y, and I always put the Y primes at the end. I'm going to clean this term up into a two Y squared. Okay, then again, all right, this term with the negative stays on the left. This term stays on the left, but everything else goes to the right, correct? Mm -hmm. Now let's focus on just the left to begin with. Now, watch what I do on this. We're going to factor out y prime, right? So I'm going to pull out that y prime. Now, this term is negative and this term is positive. Let's write this one first so that I have a 4xy minus a 3x squared. It just cleans the math up. You don't have a leading negative coefficient that way. I can add and subtract things in any order I want, right? So rearranging the terms is no big deal. Now, all three of these, I tend to keep them in the exact same order when I move them to the right-hand side. So all I'm doing is going to change the sign. So I'm going to have a minus 3x squared. I'm going to have a plus 6xy. I'm going to have a minus 2y squared. And then I need to divide by this quantity so that numerator stays the same. All right, so I wouldn't necessarily show that step. I would come down here, start with my y prime, keep that numerator the same, negative 3x squared plus 6xy minus 2y squared, all over this quantity right here, 4xy minus 3x squared. And as long as I didn't make any mistakes. Now, technically, all right, if I didn't want a leading, coefficient, leading negative coefficient there, I could have rearranged those. That's a mute point, okay, but I tried to definitely avoid it in the bottom. In the top, I'm not so overly concerned about it. Let's do it with a trig. Let's do it with some trig functions because we know trig functions and we know trig derivatives. So now we got to do it.